Hello everybody, the Canadian Investor here. Today we're going to be looking at the inverted yield curve. What's the big deal? Uh, we're going to be looking at three big topics here. We're going to be looking at what is a yield curve, uh, what's an inverted yield curve, and what's the difference between a normal yield curve and the inverted one. And lastly, uh, why should we care about this inverted yield curve? Everyone's making it such a big deal out of it in the financial community and I just want to explain to you guys why it's so important that you guys understand what it is and how it will affect you. So. Let's get right into the video. So a yield curve. All right, so this is the graph that shows us the returns on a bond. So a government issued bond. So what a government issued bond is, is when you uh, lend the government money and they promise to repay you in a certain amount of time, a fixed amount of time with a given return. So let's say it's a, a two year bond while well, you're gonna be lending the government money for two years and then they're gonna repay you a certain amount uh, you're gonna, they're going to repay you your capital back and a certain amount of interest per year. Now, usually when you lend it out for a shorter amount of time versus a longer amount of time, you're obviously going to be getting less of a uh, return because it's less risky. Um, in, amount, in the amount of 30 years, you have no idea what's going to happen. So basically, when you invest for two years uh, or a shorter amount of time uh, com as compared to 30 years, uh, you're going to get a lot larger return in the 30 year than the two year. Now, what has happened in the inverted yield curve is that now to invest or to uh, buy a bond for two years, you get a higher return than that of 10 years. Now, why is this happening? All right, so the reason for an inverted yield curve is basically um, because people are very pessimistic about the short term. So how a bond return works is that the government issues bonds and they uh, put a number on it for the return that it's going to be giving. Now, if not a lot of people are buying the bond, they're going to have to incentivize you to buy the bond. Therefore, they're going to have to increase the interest rate. So when we look at something uh, that is increasing in uh, its interest rate, basically we're looking at something that is trying to incentivize people even more to buy it, meaning less people and less people are buying it. So what you can see here is that the inverted yield curve uh, tells us that in the short term, people are not looking to happy or they, they see the long term as being safer than the short term which is really 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 scary and it's been and it's only happened before um, before the 2008 and 2009 uh, market crash so let's uh, look at what is uh, wrong with this so why should we care so when people are uh, pessimistic about the short term and looking for the long term obviously that's always a good thing i mean i'm a, I'm a long-term investor i'm always thinking about the future rather than the short term um however not everyone is like that and when people are more pessimistic about the short term than the long term uh that shows us how uh volatile the stock market could become uh people don't want their money uh where they don't see fit so and this is why this happened now what's the big deal is it going to cause us a stock market crash well we don't know. No one knows. Uh, analysts are saying that it will cause a stock market crash, but obviously no one knows. Uh, it's something that no one can control. And the only thing that you can control is being safe with your investments. Now, investing in the long term is one of the best things you can do, uh, even in a bond. Uh, in a bond, you get two, two and a half percent right now uh, for a, a long term bond, a 10 year or a 30 year. Um, however, when you look at stocks, the average and your return is 8%. So now obviously it's gonna be years that it goes down and up and down and up. Well, when picking individual stocks, I mean, if you're a decent investor, you'll be able to do much better than the market on average, um, at least 8% per year. So even when the market's going down, you can still make money. However, with the bonds, you're locked in for that period of time and you won't be able to do anything with that money. So the only thing with bonds is that it's seen as a risk-free investment, basically. That's what a bond is because the, the government has always paid back their bonds and their returns in full. So they've never missed a payment. So the, 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 the idea of a bond is just to have a secure investment or a guaranteed return versus the stock market. Nothing is guaranteed really. Um, anything you buy can go down and it will go down inevitably. And the thing with the bond is that although you get a lower return, your capital is pretty much guaranteed. So this is the idea of the yield curve and why uh, it's significant. 
obviously you can't control this uh, no matter what happens no one knows if the stock market's going to go down or go up because of this no one knows what's going to happen in the short term everyone is always predicting if we're going to have a recession if we're not going to have a recession if the economy is going to be doing well in the next year or in the next two years no one knows what's going to happen in the future and that's the reality of it the only thing you can control is the quality of your investments um, just focus on buying solid businesses solid financials solid fundamentals and you'll be good uh, during I mean during a stock market crash it creates so many opportunities uh, to make money and actually more people make money in a stock market crash than in a normal uh, bull market so that's what a yield curve is that's why a inverted yield curve is being talked about so much because a lot of people are more pessimistic in the short term versus long term and that's just something that has happened before a recession before it doesn't mean we're gonna have a recession now and maybe we will no one knows um, as a long-term investor I can just tell you that I am very bullish in the long term of um, the future of this of this planet but I can't tell you what's gonna happen in the short term and no one else can uh, people can assume they know but they don't um, but that's pretty much it guys for the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below if you did enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.